Um, but anyway, let's let's move away from the uh, from the uh, gravitational pull of this place. From the terrestrial. Yeah, and move into um, one of the things I'd really like to talk a little bit about would be um, faster than light. Um, you know, it's got the acronym now um, uh, mm -hmm. FTL, but but really and truly, um, not so many people re they think it's okay on Star Trek, but. Not so okay for real, you know, but there's a lot of research on it. Um, and uh, apparently there's some loophole that, uh, that Einstein left so we could, you know, try and get from wherever to wherever in a, in a, in a fraction of the time. So where are you with, um, with um, uh, basically um, um, warp speed, I guess would be the best way to put it. Well, let me make sure and uh, prime this with saying I'm I'm not an astrophysicist. I'm not a physicist. The, everything and th this is getting a little out of my normal realm, but I still love to talk about it because it's definitely a fun yeah. thing to to indulge in. But you know, I think sans some major breakthrough in our understanding of physics and and of space time, and specifically how to manipulate or you know how to uh, distort space time. I don't think we're going to be able to see any. You know, using conventional physics, you know, it just the it just always says that you know if you have even the tiniest bit of mass, you'll never be able to reach. You know, it just becomes exponentially harder yeah. that the heavier an object is to get closer and closer to the speed of light. So, without us being able to to warp the space and time in front of a vehicle and 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 then you know extend it behind it, basically, um, or finding things like you know if we learn about wormholes and things like that, you know, yeah. I. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't, I'm definitely not going to sit there and go, Oh, we'll never figure that out because I mean, I think a hundred years ago, they would have absolutely been laughing at saying it, that people will just casually fly across the ocean. No big deal. Yeah. And land on the moon. Like, yeah. you know, they would have never seen what was coming. Right. In the same way. I don't know what the next hundred years of, of our understanding of, of physics, especially, you know, now that we're studying gravitational waves, things like that with, you know, with, Mm -hmm. With LIGO and some of the other, uh, you know, sensitive instrumentation, we're actually learning about gravitational waves. We're already seeing ripples in, in space time and, uh, and effects of that. And I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm excited to see if, you know, if we figure some stuff out, but I'm, I'm not going to, I wouldn't be one to sit there and try to figure it out myself because I have no idea where it even start. Yeah. Well, by yourself is imp impossible <laughs> yeah. to do anything. I mean, yeah. you, any, 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 anything basically requires uh, a team of um, experts that really and truly want to move in the right direction. But you know, it's funny you said that my grandfather, um, uh, he had kind of an interesting life. He, um, <clears throat> he joined the Navy when he was either nine or 10 and, um, and uh, he was on uh, basically a steamer sailor. So it was a kind of a very old type of, um, um, not a battleship, but a ship, a, a, some warship. And he went from basically steam and sail all the way through to watching a man on, you know, land on the moon. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you think about it. Uh, he... <laughs> He went through so many different eras, um, you know, all the way to the space, the era of space. It was amazing to me. And, and to him, he kept talking about it. He says, you know, I lived an amazing life. And, and he would talk about, you know, all, all the different things that he saw that, uh, that, I mean, going from, um, going from most, a lot of people still had gas lights in their house. Yeah. especially in Britain when, uh, or it was either coal, I think they had coal oil or something, I don't know, something right. that they used to, kerosene lamps and things, mm -hmm. and then light bulbs and whatnot, and TV sets. <laughs> imagine, <laughs> imagine no radios or TVs. That would be like, uh, you know, you'd be Dark put ages. on a big pile and burned to death <laughs> like a witch. Yeah, yeah so, uh, yeah. Yeah, so it's amazing there that, that, that these things can happen, but I, I truly believe that, um, the, if, if, if people get out of the way of people with new thoughts, new ways of doing the business, I, I really think we could, we can get into it. And, and the reason for that is, is simple, right? Um, aliens, <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I, um, I, you know, I'm good at math and, uh, the, the, basically the number of stars, that's a lot to count times the number of possibilities that you'd get, um, you know, a magic, uh, a magic planet like earth seems strikingly possible to me that, that we could, uh, we should be able to communicate or at least get close to somebody who's from some other solar system and, um, and maybe they'll whisper in our ear and tell us how we can get there. Uh, you know, that's, that seems like logic to me. I'm a hundred percent with you as far as the statistical, you know, I mean, statistically we can't be alone. I mean, just yeah. from the raw data of, like you said, the, the billions of stars and the, and then the billions on billions of galaxies. Yeah. And, uh, you know, even if, uh, the average person, star has maybe five planets and if one in every 50 of them is potentially habitable i mean we're still talking about trillions of potential yeah, right you know habitable planets uh in the known universe and yeah I, I now the idea of communicating communicating with them and you know i don't know if you've read like andy weir's book um project hail mary no I have not. It's phenomenal. I highly recommend it. It is a little bit about this. And what's cool is that it, he took such an interesting approach about um, the communication differences that completely different life forms might might take. Now, he's uh, Andy Weir is the one that wrote The Martian. He also has um, an Artemis called or a book called Artemis about uh, lunar mining and lunar settlements. Uh, but his uh, his book, Project Hail Mary, was just phenomenal and, and painting this incredible picture about what it might be like to try to communicate with other life forms that w in a way that I had never thought of, we'll just put it that way. I don't want any spoilers, but it's like, this is brilliant. And um, it kind of puts into p the, the perspective, the idea that, you know, who knows, maybe they have been, you know, that there's people or, or, you know, life out there trying to communicate with us every day. And it's just in a way that we don't have the capacity to even understand yet. Um, yeah. It's, I, I'm I'm with you, and I, I'm excited uh, to. Th it makes it does make me really excited to think about the idea of us being able to to discover definitively yeah. uh, other life forms. Yeah, I um um like I say, I've been kind of into this forever. Uh, from my earliest recollection, I I used to think you know there's got to be <laughs> if there's one here, there's got to be a whole bunch of them up there, and um and then when. Uh, there was a guy named Von Donegan that talked about uh, ancient aliens and whatnot. And somehow they must have had, if, if that's true, and it sounds like they just found some more bones in a cave somewhere uh, with little teeny people in it. But And 60% of the DNA is the same as a human. So something there is going on. But, hmm. but you think about it and, um, and, you, and you wonder... If you if we just put things into our own kind of um, time frames or whatever, you wonder how. Okay, so Rome was like magic, right? Everything is going on. They got sculpting. They got paintings. They got giant buildings that they're building, and then they they walk west and uh, and they bump into the Gauls, and in essence, they they live in caves <laughs> and they weigh and and they they're wearing bear skins or something. Um, they found some way to communicate. So it would seem to me that um, if there is some communication potential, we should be able to sort it out unless there's something I'm missing. I, I mean, it's to the point where I think it's, you know, w if we're talking about communicating via, you know, human to human and, uh, you know, audible through the air transmission yeah. of vocal cords to, to eardrum, you know, that's one form of communication. But if we're talking about, you know, gravitational waves or something that, we just aren't even barely able to physically tune into yet, you know, as a species, like we're yeah. just now at the very, very beginning of, of even being able to detect a gravitational wave, let alone know how to interpret or know how to listen with enough fidelity to know. I mean, who knows what, an, how an alien species would figure out how to, you know, yeah. especially if we're talking about vast distances, um, you know, if you're, if you're talking about light years away, um, and if you want to actually communicate across a galaxy or across, you know, the universe, we're, we, you got to be able to figure out something that can yeah. communicate other than, you know, the electro, uh, the, the spectrum, the standard spectrum of, of light, you know, and, um, yeah, it just gets really interesting. And, and I, 
I always go back to great claims require great evidence, but someday, man, oh man, are we going to have some incredible, you know, something's going to pop up at us and smack us right in the face. And it's going yeah. to be a day to, to remember and a day to celebrate for sure. Yeah. Well, I, I personally uh, think that um, somehow, some way, um, somebody has come here at one time or another because there are certain um, leaps that uh, that happen in civilization. It, I just don't see how that could happen via trial and error. And I've been in a lot of different places. Um, I'm kind of into uh, these ancient locations and when you look at it and go i'm a tool maker i couldn't make that i mean you know i i i knew how to make pretty much anything and um uh i can remember uh, going uh, to uh, bolivia and and uh looking at a bunch of rocks basically with internal patterns that i could not uh, oh. I couldn't interpret it at all. And, and these things are thousands of years old and, and they're razor sharp. Uh, how they did that is way beyond me. And how they stayed that way is even, mm. even more um, uh, confusing, I guess, would be the right word. So, huh. Yeah, I, I, I definitely, I personally, you know, I, I, like I said, I kind of had to abide by the great claims require great evidence. But I do think that there's some... I wouldn't be surprised if someday, you know, we we have a conclusive statement of like, oh, you know what? We kind of put all this stuff together and it does appear that, yeah. you know, 5,000 years ago or whatever, you know, <laughs> I mean, that wouldn't, yeah. that wouldn't really surprise me if, if we, you know, if we put all that together. Um, yeah. And, you know, and that could be a blip in time to another species too. The, exactly. the species might say, we'll be right back thinking like I'm going to the bathroom, a quick bathroom break. They come back and it's 5,000 years later and, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, who knows, you know, that kind of stuff. It's definitely within the realm of possibilities. When you think about the great span of time and distance, it's, yeah. it's definitely, uh, it's hard to fathom as, as a, as a, with our little, you know, peanut brains. Yeah. Well, uh, peanut brains, <laughs> we might as well, might as well, uh, <laughs> stop right there, I guess. Be a while before we can catch on. I don't want to get into politics. <laughs> peanut brains and politics. 